How's it going, guys? I'm going to be talking about the endosymbiotic theory. Endosymbiotic theory is super important to understand. It is very frequent on a lot of standardized tests, like your AP biology class, the IB classes, and even in college level courses. So let's break it down. Endo means in. If you think about something that's inside something, like an endoderm is the inner layer of the skin. That means inside. Symbiosis means together. Think about what symbiotic relationship is. They live together. And think about what a symphony orchestra is. It's all the instruments of different types playing together. So check this out. Here's some bacteria. They're living together. There's the symbiosis. And the endo part is their inside of this system right here. Just as a quick mental jog, I want to make sure that you guys realize that a bacteria is a prokaryote. A prokaryote is not going to have a nucleus it is not going to have membrane-bound organelles. However, it is going to have its own DNA. It's going to have its own ribosomes. And what this idea is, is the endosymbiotic theory shows, and there's some evidence, some strong evidence that point towards the idea that these bacteria that are symbiotically living together to collectively are going to give rise to a eukaryotic cell. A eukaryotic cell is going to be a cell that is going to have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. So right here, I just want to compare. Here's your bacteria that I was talking about before. Here's your prokaryote. And roughly the same size inside of this eukaryotic cell are mitochondria. So here's an animal-like eukaryotic cell. This is not going to have any chloroplast or anything like that. There's a nucleus here not shown, and it is bound by a cell membrane. Okay. If we compare the mitochondria to the bacteria, I mentioned it was at roughly the same size. It is going to contain DNA that is going to be about the same size. The mitochondrial DNA is roughly around 16,000 base pairs around, similar for the bacteria. The mitochondria is going to have its own ribosomes. The ribosomes are going to be free-floating. They are going to be roughly the same structure as a bacterial ribosome, as opposed to the ribosomes that are like bound to the endoplasmic reticulum in an regular eukaryotic cell. Okay, so what about a plant cell? Okay, a plant cell is going to have a chloroplast, okay? A chloroplast and a mitochondria each are bound by their own membrane. A chloroplast and a mitochondria each are going to have their own ribosomes. And a chloroplast and a mitochondria are each going to have their own individual DNA. Now, these mitochondria and chloroplasts do have the ability to replicate inside of a cell very similar to a bacteria. So is a bacteria deriving into a chloroplast? Well, there's a very special kind of bacteria that have photosynthetic pigments. They could, they could under, they could capture light energy. They could do photosynthesis. These are the cyanobacteria. Now, even though the pigments may be a slightly different wavelength, the, uh, the idea is there where it captures energy from the sun, okay, to, in order to make organic nutrients and produce oxygen. So, the same idea with the eukaryotic plant cells. We have mitochondria and chloroplasts that derived from the prokaryotes, cyanobacteria, and regular bacteria. So if we do a basis of comparison, a lot of times in the essay questions or the free response questions or even the multiple choice questions, you're going to be asked to draw upon your knowledge of strong evidence that supports the endosymbiotic theory. So here it is. So first I want to mention that it is going to be the same size. The bacteria are going to be roughly the same size as the mitochondria and particularly the thylakoids inside the chloroplast are where these really derive from. And we have similar structure ribosomes. The ribosomes are going to be inside the prokaryote, same as the mitochondria, and the same as the chloroplast. And not only uh, they're free-floating, but they're similar structure. Okay, the DNA is going to be circular inside of a mitochondria, 16,000 kilobases around, or 1,000 base pairs around, and we have only one chromosome in the prokaryote and the chloroplasts, uh, roughly the same size. And, of course, they are going to reproduce asexually inside of a cell similar to a prokaryote. Okay, guys, so there it is, the endosymbiotic theory.